challenges that we have to deal with today are more often than not, not necessarily national. Uh, many times, things that happen in one country greatly affect neighboring countries in very significant ways. And so it is our, it is our persuasion at ARF that some of this development policy research now needs to be conducted uh, regionally. So we work a lot on regional dimensions of, 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 of development policy research in the areas that I've mentioned. Um, and that means we, we try to link these institutions. For example, in this country alone, we have some very good centers of development research, like the Kenyan Institute of Public Policy Research and Analysis, which is a government-supported you know, policy research institute. We've got the private ones, like the Institute of Economic Affairs, the Institute of Policy Analysis and Research, in Tanzania, you've got big ones like the Economic and Social Research Foundation, and so on. So the point here is to try and let these institutions to talk to each other about their countries and about the region. So that's one of the things that ARF does. The third thing that we do, and which probably is closer to what we are doing here today, is knowledge management. Generating that knowledge, of course it comes from research, but also using other ways of generating that. And, and just making it available to those whom we think will need it. And that is a wide range of people, starting with students, like idealists, a majority of the audience today are students from universities. Starting with students, then those who teach, those who make policy in, in, in government, and also those who play a role in policy making outside government. So we do knowledge management in many ways. Um, of course, publish. We have many books that are published by RRF. You may have been given a catalog as you are walking in. Uh, we also support people to write. And that is how uh, this undertaking with uh, with Mzee Odinge Odera uh, came into, into existence. We identify people whom we think have with them uh, immense knowledge in certain areas of, of development. A knowledge that we think ought not to be left uh, uh, without documentation. So we support these people through another program that we call Associate Fellowship. We award them an Associate Fellowship and many times uh, we ask them to come in residence, uh, to be resident fellows at ARRF. Um, and then during that time, usually three months or slightly more than that, we give support, we support their research, we help them with the editing their material and so on, and eventually a book like what you have here comes out. But this particular book, is linked to another undertaking that ARF is doing, which is an African leadership series. We have an African, African leadership series that includes the publication of books on African leaders and African leadership, and also the holding of public lectures, focusing again on African leadership and African leaders. So this is the first book in the series, but there have been lectures uh, that ARF has convened big, big lectures in Nairobi about African leadership. I think the one that was most popular, that, that many people remember, is the one that uh, involved people like Professor Mahmoud Mabdani, uh, people like Professor Daban Don Young. Uh, we had also Professor Issa Shivji, um, and also the late Professor Aru Botman. These are people we have invited to Nairobi, all of them are non Kenyans, to come and give lectures on, on, on African leadership. So this is the first book. It is not going to be the last one. Um, there are many more people who have applied who think that they want to write about African leaders and we are looking at them, of course, all this depends on uh, whether or not we have resources to support all of them. But we have applications from people who want to write about Nerere, we have applications from people who want to write about others. And like Professor Muga said, uh, the whole point is not to focus on political leaders. That's not, the, the, that's not the point. The point is to focus on people who have exhibited excellence um, in managing different affairs of society. They may have been business people, they may have been academics, uh, uh, and I was just thinking when Professor Muga talked about uh, Professor Wasau, probably somebody needs to, to write about him. Uh, they may be, they may be you know, professionals, including doctors, like Professor. Um, and so it's not, it's not a series of African political leaders. It's a series of African leadership. And when we advertise and ask people to send in their requests, we made it very clear that you could write about any African leader as long as you can build a case, even if that person is not known to her rest, you can build a case to say why you think they have offered distinguished service and why those 
should be correct so that generations such as the one, uh, the majority before us today can benefit from this, from this information. Now, finally, why are we in Kisumu today? We are in Kisumu to, in response actually, to, 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 to some demand, I would say. This book was published early in the year, the book on Jeromogi. It was published early this year and was launched in Nairobi in April. Uh, the launch of the book was a bigger event uh, that involved you know, many people from uh, this country and outside. The chief guest at that time was the Prime Minister. We had lots of many cabinet ministers and so on. But after that event, we received inquiries and suggestions from people saying two things. One is they said, it was good enough, I mean it was very good to launch the book and to bring it to public. In fact, it was also serialized, I think, for one full week by the standard newspapers. But people said, two things have not happened. One is that at the launch of the book, there was not an open debate. I mean, it was a ceremony. You know, as, as, as I've explained, you know, high profile guests, you know, rushed ceremonies because when you have ministers of the prime minister, you want to do things within time and they just leave. Yet, a lot of people felt that this is the kind of thing that needs to be discussed, you know, by academics, especially in audiences where there are students so that the inspiration can go down, you know. Um, so that's one, one thing that uh, we, we had to deal with after the launch of the book. The other thing that we had to deal with was that, you know, Deramogi is Kenyan, of course Deramogi is a global citizen, was a global citizen. His contribution was not just about Kenya, I think, uh, to many parts of the world. His influence was felt. But people still thought that, why not do something about this in Western Kenya, you know? where Jeremoki grew up and so on, where he went to school and say no and all this. And, and, and so, he said, to be, to be fair to the people of West Kenya, if after you've done your big launch in Nairobi, you went down to close of Jeremoki's home and again did an event there. Uh, and we were debating with it, with us, within the management of RRF, what sort of event would this be? Do we go to the late Jeremoki's family and say we want to do a memorial at home? There have been many memorials of the late Museum. But finally we came to the conclusion that the best thing to do would be to partner with the university and try to achieve those two objectives using one event, have something in Western Kenya, but at the same time have something that is less formal, less ceremonial, open uh, symposium, academic debates and so on and so forth. And that's why we are here. And of course also to make the book available. A lot of people also say, oh we can't find the book. It's only available in Nairobi and so on. So the book is here. I think many, uh, there are many copies that we came with and will be on sale after that. So that is basically the reason that we're here. And we are very, very happy that uh, the Great Lakes University accepted to work with us on this. Um, you might not know, but sometimes it's not very easy to partner with investors on some things. Those of us who work on uh, research and uh, you know, analysis work outside universities will tell you that getting striking a partnership with universities sometimes is very difficult, especially in this country, for some very funny reasons sometimes. <laughs> sometimes very funny reasons. Um, so, so we are really, we are really happy and we are very grateful that the Great Lakes University accepted. And I can assure you that after this event, we definitely are not going to end this. We will still enhance these partnerships with universities in this country to continue working together on this African leadership since public lectures and publications and so on. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will hand back to, 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 to Ross to invite uh, the keynote speaker, but um, I need to say that the reason we picked Mseo Dinge to write about Jeramogi is clear. If you have a copy of the book, then a bit of that is explained at the back. It is because out of those who expressed interest to write on different people, we thought Mseo Dinge was very suitable to write on Jeremogi because of his experience with him. Uh, Ross introduced him as somebody who had worked with Jeremogi as a speechwriter for over 20 years, Mze. Many years, isn't it? Mze is himself a trained journalist, a US trained, I think a beneficiary of the Mboya Airlines in those days. Um, and so we thought this is the kind of person we need. I mean, he was, if you read the book, you get the details of it. He was in all sorts of places with Jeremogi some very good ones and also not very good places and so on. And we thought this, this, this is the right man. And as you can see, Mzee is aged. 
we wanted to tap this knowledge. I'm not saying that Jose is giving his last name. I'm just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted, to, we wanted to get this information and we are hoping that those of you who will get to read the book will benefit. But thank you very much. Thank you, George, for giving us an overview of why we are here today. I'll go straight on and uh, invite Jose to share with us his experience and more about the book. Very good. my moment of delight. This morning, it is not my moment, it is our moment in greeting you with all our It is only appropriate to take this opportunity to recognize the efforts of the publishers of this book, my journey with Yenavoli who we'll organized this symposium today in honor of one of Kenya's political kingpins in the name of Jeremy Oginga Binka. And to bring together some of these scholars, authors, is by no means, is by no means a simple thing. Like many African countries, Kenya has produced its heroes and heroes, especially in their determination to bring change in the form of political as well as economic freedom over the long dominance of colonial settlements. The struggle for independence in many countries including our own pain, involved and called for sacrifice and untold sufferings. The attitude of the colonizing forces towards the Indian people was uncompromisingly hostile and discriminatory. <coughs> I tell you something very interesting. When I first went to Arabia in 1953, was the first time I stepped in the room. I went to Antonio. Asians, Africans, Europeans, and Arabs. Now that you could not go to that part of the tour, not go to Arabs. You got only African section of, of the door of the chop or net for the black man. That's what I call this period. In a manner of speaking, such oppressions and hostilities towards Kenyans in, in turn had a their result, both educated <coughs> and uneducated alike. The prevailing circumstances at that time hastened to create result and result again 
the injustice 